Hello again, folks. Today we're going to be working on section 12.4, uh, the last thing before Thanksgiving, of course. Measures of dispersion. Uh, let's see. Today is the 24th, 25th, I'm sorry, of November. Soon to be the holiday. Okay, so we'll be doing section 12.4. Um, the packet that I would have for you today um, has this uh, table that I'm going to fill in to describe and compare um, these concepts, one of which you already know the mean, of course, but it's good to have that um, in reference because uh, there's some similarity here. Um, I swiped this from the textbook just in case you don't see this video. These are the two formulas basically that you would need. Uh, one for range and the other for uh, standard deviation. A little information about them. This is my own example. Well, I took this from a book years ago, but uh, I rather like this uh, for illustrating the difference between uh, ranges. Um, then there is uh, a problem for walking you through standard deviation, the calculation. I didn't give you a lot of space, so I, I kind of felt bad. What I really wanted when I had originally created this was that you just put the end results in here, okay? But, um, slightly uh, smarter of me would be uh, to have you tabulate this information. This is a, basically a, a table made from Microsoft Excel. You're not required to use this, but if you wanted to uh, enter this uh, information into Excel, this is really a step-by-step -step process of what is going on. In other words, you could make Excel do these things piecemeal, or you could just go straight for the standard deviation uh, function that is in the software. Uh, you just have to be acclimated to using Excel. Um, this is, again, something I swipe from the textbook in case you do not see this video. Uh, this is a description of the process. Right, a little information or an allusion to where to look in the textbook. If you're going to use, um, uh, say, your TI-83, which you are not required to have. All right. This is our calculator, the TI-30, yeah. and it is sufficient. So then these are the three examples that were in this section. All right. Anyhow, um, I think this is the most imperative, so if you're going to print anything, do print this. Um, dispersion has another name, uh, variation, which I'm more, um, have an affinity for, <laughs> but anyhow, <clears throat> sorry, uh, think about it this way, we have discussed at this point averages, measures of central tendency, and position. And just for the sake of comparison, uh, what we will discuss now is dispersion, otherwise known as uh, variation. Just like these will turn, well, this alternatively has uh, the the title Measures of Central Tendency, which kind of implies what it means. If, um, if average is basically a number uh, used to describe or represent the center, of data, and there's several types of averages, of course, and position um, is a number um, that represents location 
in the data well, then dispersion or variation is a number that represents I'll use a different word, illustrates. How spread the data. So, yeah, just to emphasize, when you think averages, think center. Right? When you think position, think location. It is a point. Right? Um, and dispersion, spread. Uh, that is as concise as I could possibly get it. If average is a number used to describe the center and position is a number that represents location, then dispersion is a number that illustrates variation, pardon me, yes, how well varied, how spread out the data is. Okay. Now, um, let me give you sort of a diagram and then we'll get it rolling here. Um, just as there were types of vari uh, pardon me, types of averages, there will be types of variation, dispersion. All right, um, there's the super easy one, range. Then there's kind of the go-to, uh, and I think perhaps the more popular of the two. When, uh, even if you don't know what it's for, even if you don't know how to obtain it, you've probably heard this, uh, this phrase before. Standard deviation. And then there is another category, technically, and you're not responsible for this, variance. It's uh, very similar to the standard deviation, give or take one step. Um, there's a little information about each of these. Right. I would say the, the purpose of range right, is to give you um, total spread, a feel for how far apart the extremes are, this is basically how far apart the extremes, the lowest data point and the highest data point, that is the formula, right? uh, I'll just call it off of range. It's the highest minus the lowest. Right, and this is the easiest to calculate. Right. Um, but also the most susceptible. To outliers. It's a bit dark. It's the most susceptible to outliers. That's what I have written here. I hope that's visible. Right. Meaning, 
it, it is affected by them in an adverse way. Uh, an outlier is a piece of data that really, in a, in a, in a scientific experiment, in the context of science, uh, a number that should not be included because it, there's something peculiar about it, right? It's either too far out of, uh, uh, on an extreme, uh, compared to the rest of the data one way or another. And for all intents and purposes, there's a calculation you could do to calculate an outlier, and in this uh, course, you're not really responsible for it, but for right now, think of it as being bad data that just happens to exist in the set. Right? So if that happens to be, so you know, it would be naturally on an end, right? It would be if you put the, your data set in numerical order, so it could be the lowest number, right? Um, or adjacent to the lowest number, or it could be the highest number, right? Or adjacent as well. If you um, then use that as part of this simple calculation, right? It's not going to give you really a reliable feel for how far apart the extremes ought to be, you know? And we'll just tell you what they are. Anyhow, this is still easy to calculate, it's just literally subtracting two things. The standard deviation is more reliable. It's a more complex calculation, right? And it will tell you how much data differ from the mean. Basically, the mean, although that is an average, is incorporated as part of this calculation. It's uh, basically strategically choosing a common point right, for all of the data to be compared to. Right? And you could tell, you could basically, I don't want to give it away, but you could take an average of how far apart the data are from that common point. Right? There's two types of standard deviation. There's the type that is for samples, which is really what we'd be using, and the type for populations. And you could tell them, a, it's the same calculation, basically, there's just one little swipe, a slight little tweak to the number that you divide by. Um, you could tell by the um, abbreviations. Sample will usually just be um, S. So you'll see an S. Um, if you see a rather stylized looking O, it's actually lowercase sigma. Remember capital sigma looks like this. Okay. This is a lowercase symbol, uh, uh, sigma. So it's kind of like a I always think of it as being like a spit curl kind of Superman hair, kind of O, and it's got flair. Anyhow, we're responsible primarily for this in this uh, course. Variance. Um, I hate to use green, but I don't think it's going to write, but... Um, you are not responsible for. It's not part of Mat 114. But the truth is, it's just an added step. Yeah. Give or take. It's either squaring or just avoiding the square root. Um, I definitely uh, don't have sufficient board space to continue. Um, so let me do this. Let me, uh, let me erase this and we'll fill in uh, basically this diagram.
there's multiple steps to standard deviation, and there's no way I could possibly fit it here. This bothering me. Maybe they should go to the dentist. Or to be more accurate, it's my gum. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I began to sort of build the scaffolding for this already. It's not to take up too much time. Probably an insufficient amount of space, but uh, here's as I have labeled it again on this handout. Right, we have the concept, um, whatever formula or symbol. The instruction involved. the purpose of a description. Right, um, for these uh, things. The mean uh, we are already uh, familiar with. Right. The mean is represented by, at least insofar as a sample is concerned, x bar, x with a little line above it. Right. In theory, if it was a population, we would use mu. Right. This is a sample. This is for a population, just to signify that. And the formula is the sum, which is what sigma represents s, of x's divided by the cardinal number, how many data values there are. Basically, what does that mean? Well, it means that you add all data values. And then two, divide by the number of values. Hopefully that is visible. And what does this produce? Well, it is the concept of an average, right? which gives you a feel for what the center is. It's not proper English, but you, I think you get the point. The range, um, Take up a heck of a lot of space. So, just add this. The range, as mentioned, is really the highest. Minus the lowest. Right. So as a procedure, um, you really just have to subtract. As a preliminary step, I would um, 
rank all data. That is, put it in numerical order first. That's how you would tell what is the lowest, what is the highest, ideally. And then just subtract. I minus low. This is the difference all right and again it's for giving you a feel for spread Um, then there's standard deviation, again, a more reliable calculation. This is multi-step. They may have to uh, elongate this amount of space here. Okay, the formula Again, it could be similar for, uh, to uh, mean in that there's a symbol to imply sample versus population. But instead of x bar and mu, you can see the s or um, lowercase sigma. Um, we are going to use sample standard deviation here, so we'll use s. It is officially the square root of the sum of differences squared divided by n minus 1. Some of these features might be familiar at this point. All right, this is again the reason why I incorporated mean into this conversation. Mean is an average, all right? Well, the standard deviation is basically an average of differences right. to and from a common point. And the common point happens to be the mean. It's technically the average of the differences squared, but there's really just a, that's why there's also a square root here, all right? What's gonna happen when you subtract is that you're going to get negative numbers in addition to positive numbers, which will, if you combine them, will induce a cancellation effect. So to more or less circumvent a cancellation effect, uh, someone had the good idea of going, well, we'll square it, all right? And that will make things not negative is when you square either a positive or a negative to begin with, what does it do? It makes everything positive. As an afterthought to sort of reverse that idea, square root is employed. Right. It's taking a little autistic license with the order of operations, perhaps, but uh, it's still, you know, a usable piece of uh, equipment. Anyhow, Let me add one other thing here. The larger the standard deviation, the larger the variation. Right, so when you think big numbers, think a larger variation. Things the individual data values vary more widely about the common point. Right, if you had a small standard deviation by by contrast, then you would have a small variation. 
Like in in, in uh, respect of the numbers that you're using. <coughs> All right. Now, as for the uh, sort of a procedure here to summarize, this is it in a nutshell. Um, I'm going to put it in blue, just not to get it confusing here, for the sake of contrast. One, all right, you would calculate the mean. as step number one. Right. Number two, and this is why it's a little tedious, you would subtract, right, each value by the mean. Then again, to circumvent any cancellation effects that would occur before you add, right, you're going to square. each difference then you are going to add all of those outcomes you're going to divide n minus 1 and then square root is visible. This is written elsewhere, but just to summarize it here as um, briefly as possible. Let me just do one of myself a little favor here. Okay, so to emphasize here, you're going to calculate the mean. You're going to subtract each value minus the mean. You're going to square each difference. All right, then you're going to add, then you're going to divide. And then you're going to square root. Essentially, again, square rooting is to uh, sort of compensate for having squared mid-range, right? Uh, mid-process, right? And again, the reason for squaring is just to circumvent any issue before you uh, attempt to add anything. If you have negative numbers, it might uh, cancel out. Um, then there's this other thing which is worthy of being mentioned, anyhow. Again, you're not really responsible for this, but I'll mention it anyhow, because it, it, it's just a difference of one extra step, all right? We're not doing a step, depending upon how you look at it. This is variance, a third type of dispersion. Variance is uh, abbreviated as S squared. So if you have this standard deviation which involved square rooting, squaring it as an afterthought, all right, is undoing that. It's leaving you with basically just the guts in here. Okay. The truth is this is more or less the original idea. The 
original idea of having an average of differences, except that it's not in the same um, degree. Meaning that if you looked at the units, right, the units involved in this calculation would technically be degree two, right? The units aren't the same. Right? If there is a unit involved in the calculation of standard deviation, after you square root it, it returns it to the original degree. So it would be if you started with a measurement that was, uh, you know, you know, inches or something like that, it would just be inches. It wouldn't be inches squared. Sorry, my teeth are bothering me. It's been a while. I couldn't figure it out for a while. I'm like, why, why am I having trouble speaking? And I'm like, this, I have a gum infection. Okay. All right. Um, if you are not really happy with this uh, explanation, again, it's written in two other places. All right, on this handout, this is the same description um, for standard deviation calculation. And it is also technically um, written here. Okay. And there is the formula as well. Um, now what I'd like to do is basically these two problems, because I think this is fun actually. Uh, let me get this out of the way, and then we'll work on this. All right, um, the, reason, the reason I picked this is because of the dogs, really. Um, if you examine these pictures very superficially, you see uh, essentially four dogs here, and I want to say it's eight dogs here. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's a very teeny one. Seven, eight. <laughs> this dog here uh, looks like my dog Pokey, right? uh, who is no longer with us. He passed away about a decade ago, but anyway, he was a wonderful dog. 
Anyway, this is a Bernie's Mountain Dog. I thought this was as well, but no, unless it's a mix, it's, uh, I believe, some other uh, uh, breed. Anyhow, they're wonderful dogs, uh, Bernie's. All dogs are good, really, but I mean, I loved him. He was wonderful. Um, anyhow, there's just four dogs here, and if you examine them, again, they're mm, superficially. They all kind of look the same in that they're about the same size. All right, so although it's not totally scientific to say something like this, but they're probably close to the same weight since they're all, they're all dogs, all right? Whereas if you look at this picture, there's quite a, a distinction among them, all right? This little guy here, which is, uh, what do you call that, uh, Basset Hound, all right? It's barely visible because he's being obscured by uh, the Bernies and uh, the Husky, you know? And there's a little Scotty over here. Um, anyhow, they, you could probably guess that they are different weights, right? Because they are different masses, right? And they are obviously different sizes, right? In the superficial sense. Anyhow, this is for the purpose of illustrating um, range firstly, right? Here is their weights, all right? This is all in pounds. These dogs are 70, 73, 80, no, 58, and 60. And these are 55, 60, 85, 42, 125, 40, 75, and 30. Right. As a good habit, um, you should put things in uh, numerical order. But the, what I wanted you to do is two things. Um, the diagram looks like this. A space to work. Oh, it's done already. All right. Um, to calculate the means of each of these, and then uh, to calculate their ranges. Okay. Um, so I'm going to put them in numerical order. This is the set of door weights. And the weights are 58, 60, um, 70, and 73, yeah, in numerical order. And for these, uh, let's see, 40, 42, 45, 30 no, 30 is the first one, 30, 40, 42, 55, 60, uh, let's see, 75, 85, and I believe 125, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, that looks correct, okay, sorry, this is a bit sloppy. Anyhow, if we know how to calculate the mean. This is the instruction overall. Um, the sum of all dogs' uh, weights divided by the number of dogs. And so, in this case, um, there are four dogs, so we're going to divide by four. And in this case, there are eight dogs. So we'll divide by eight. As for the actual sum, um, if you add 58, 60, 70, and 73, you should get 261. And if you add uh, 30, 40, 42, 55, 60, 75, 85, and 125, uh, you should get 512. You can confirm or deny that. Please do. Now, in spite of these dogs originating from different sets, all right, what you're going to notice as you calculate the means is that they're similar. All right? This is equal to 65 and a quarter pounds. And this is right on the nose 
64 pounds. So not exactly the same, but remarkably similar in spite of the differences in the sets. That's really the whole point, All right? Now, if you took the ranges, uh, the range here would be 73 minus 58, which would be 15 pounds. Um, technically, we can incorporate a unit. And the range here would be 125, which I can only guess is the Burmese. They were big dogs. Um, minus 30. Right, and then you have 95 pounds. All right, now, what does this mean? Well, this means that the total spread from one extreme to the end is just 15. Right? Whereas in this case, the total spread is larger. It's 95, right? This illustrates that there's a difference between sets of data uh, with similar means. Right. The difference between sets of data with similar mean Need to have a similar mean in order, and the same type of thing. Ideally, is dog weight, um, in order to you know, for, for a basis of, of comparison. All right, for two sets of data with approximately the same mean, all right, we could take ranges to see how they differ in that respect. All right, this is the dogs are not different, which again the picture confirms. All right, these dogs are very similar. Right. Their weights are slightly different, granted, but they're basically the same size dog. Whereas in this case, there's a lot more variation. Right? The, the, the real essence of this is that the numbers can basically convey that idea of variation without the picture. Right? In fact, the numbers will probably be uh, more reliable. Um, although perhaps less satisfying, right? because um, they're not, your opinion is not corrupted by whatever you're looking at, you know? Anyhow, this has low variation for all intents and purposes, and this has high variation. I think uh, part of the obstacle in this uh, section is getting used to the idea that a number is designed to give you a feeling. All right, but think about temperature. All right, the temperature scales that we have, are, especially Fahrenheit, right, are totally arbitrary. They're a number that is meant to give you a feeling. All right, and we've grown up with it and we just kind of accept it for that reason. Like when someone tells you, at least in the United States, that, oh, it's 20 degrees outside, you go, brrr, you know, you have a, a visceral reaction to it. All right, but what is really the purpose of that number? To kind of give you an idea, you know, a basis for comparison. All right, well, that's what the ranges are for. It's trying to give you, at least insofar as similar means, all right, they have to have, they have approximately the same mean, if you, you know, round it badly, I suppose, all right, but close enough, all right, in this example, all right, to compare their ranges, all right, this is a low variation and that is a high variation, and that's really all what the number is trying to do, it's trying to give you an idea of being, this is low by comparison and this is high by comparison. Okay. Um, 
Let's do the amped up version of variance, this version, which is this next thing. Right. These are the heights in inches of the uh, 2011 to 2012 uh, uh, Cleveland Cavaliers. <laughs> it's kind of random, right? 75, 81, 83, 78, 81, 75, uh, 4, rather. <coughs> All right. uh, let me erase this. Um, in taking this example, I'm going to illustrate brute force, all right, how to calculate the standard deviation. Now, especially if you had a large uh, data array rather than just one row here, all right, you probably would not want to do this by hand, although in an odd sort of way, it's kind of zen, you know, like when you do the same thing repetitiously, not only do you learn it, all right, and as you learn it, you get more and more comfortable with it, but it kind of puts you in sort of a, um, a sublime state of mind, believe it or not. At least I think so. All right. So let's just do this at least one time the old-fashioned way. All right. Because you'll get a better feel, a better understanding for it if you do that. All right. And this is the process. All right. Uh, step zero is we're going to put these things in numerical order. Rank them. That's a good habit. So if you see uh, 75, 81, 83, 78, 81, and 74, that means that the low number is uh, 74, then 75, then 78, the two 81s, and then 83. the mean. Um, this is again the sum of all these x values divided by their cardinal number. So if we did it brute force, uh, that means 74 plus 75 plus 78 plus 81 plus 81 plus 83 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, what you would get is 472 of the six, right? which means that this is, um, it's a repeater, right? It is actually 78.6 repeating. Now, if you're doing this by hand, um, you're probably going to want to round this. Just realize that once you do, it is unfortunately corrupting the calculation ever so slightly. So, 78.7 would be the number I would use. All right. It's rounded appropriately and um, it incorporates the extra decimal. All right. um, number two, we're going to subtract right. in this manner. Each value is going to be subtracted by the mean. So I didn't really give you a lot of space for this purpose, but that means that you're going to do this. You're going to take 74 minus 78.7, right? 75 minus 78.7. 78 minus 78.7 and these three are going to give you negative numbers then you're technically doing 81 twice and then 83 minus 78.7 what does that leave you with 
Well, um, using my rounded decimal here, uh, should be, let's see. Well, yeah, I'll show you. Don't break it now. Sorry for the uh, fireworks here. 74 minus 78.7. All right, you get, notice, negative, sorry for the reflection, negative 4.7. that adjacent. Negative 4.7, well, that writes really nicely. Um, 75, right, is negative 3.7. 78 is negative 0. 0.7. 81 is 2.3, and then 2.3 again, and then 83 is uh, 4.3. Okay, what is in green is basically what you're going to use next. Okay, three, you're going to square each. The differences. Okay, so what does that mean? It means... Uh, negative 4.7 squared, negative 3.7 squared, negative 0 0.7 squared, 2.3, 2.3, and 4.3. What do you get in each of these cases? Well, negative 4.7, and there's a button thankfully on your calculator here that will just square that is uh, 55 point, yeah, is that back, uh, 22.09, sorry, I'm reading it backwards. 22.09, right? 3.7 squared is 13.69. Um, and then 0.7 squared is 0 0.49, 2.3 done twice, is 5.29 and 4.3 is 18.49. Again, what is the purpose of squaring here? Well, if the very next step is to add, all right, you would add all the squares. Uh, for the purpose of step number five, which is to divide. What would naturally happen if you added a bunch of negatives, that is having not, not having squared yet, if you combine these negatives, there's going to be a cancellation effect. So you're not going to get a meaningful average, which again, this is sort of the type of average, all right? It's, uh, again, it's taking a little autistic license with the uh, order of operations, perhaps, you know? But it's just to get you a feel, all right? Again, we're trying to get a number to give us some kind of idea, you know, in the same way a temperature scale is just a number that gives us a feeling, all right? And it might even be silly to think of it that way, but it's true. All right, so we now have these squared numbers to add together. If you combined 22, 13, uh, 0 0.49, 5, uh, 29, and 18, uh, you should get this. 65.34. All right, now nearing the end, but not quite. We're going to divide by n minus 1. Now, you might want to to yourself, reasonably. Why don't we just divide by n, as in the case of uh, finding the mean? 
The reason why you're subtracting one data value is to basically make it a sample. Right. That is really the difference in the calculation between standard deviation of a population and standard deviation of a sample. In fact, I wrote that here. If you divide by the actual cardinal number n, the number of values, then you have a population. If you divide by one less than that, right, then you have a standard deviation of a sample, which is what we're doing. So just having one extra thing taken off, right, we will call this a sample standard deviation. Right? So 65.34, Um, divided by how many data values are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to divide by five instead. The end result is going to be a little different because, it, and it will be regarded as well. It's a sample standard deviation and not a population. Okay, and that is going to equal um, thirteen point zero six eight. Now at this point, this is technically the variance. Now, the original idea that we're taking an average of um, the difference between data values and the mean. Right? This is the variance. Right? But if you examine the units, it's not exactly that useful. I mean, I don't want to speak disparagingly of it, but think about, it, think about it this way. These are the heights of a bunch of basketball players, right? So that's inches. Degree one, a one-dimensional measurement vertically. All right? Even if I calculated an average, that would still be inches, right? Even if I calculated a difference, these would still be inches, right? Once I square the unit, what happens to the unit as well as in addition to the number? They're no longer heights anymore, right? This is inches squared, right? It's not the same unit. All right? It's still inches, of course, but it's inches degree two, a two-dimensional uh, incarnation of this rather than what it was, all right? Just degree one, all right? So the added step, all right? Step six, all right, is to square root. That is kind of compensating for the fact that we have put this here. We have squared, which we used again to just avoid circumvent the cancellation effect. Right? Square root um, the quotient. That's a bit sloppy. So here, yeah, just to make it more obvious, I'll put it in red. Okay, if you square root that, this is what you would get. Square root of 13.068 is um, 3.6149688 and so forth. All right, so you can round it, right? Let us say, it's approximately 3.6 inches. Right. That is the standard deviation. Three point six inches is the standard deviation. Thirteen point zero six eight is technically the variance. And again, we've returned the calculation to the original units.
So this is arguably better. I don't want to, again, speak disparagingly of variance. I'm sure it has its uses, but um, this might be more immediately useful. So 3.6 right, is the variation. It's the average Three point six inches is the average distance, if you will. Distance difference. I'm using it in the same context of the data to the common point. The common point being the mean, which is the middle. All right. center. Okay. Later on, when we get to section uh, 12.5, and I think 12.6 as well, all right, you'll see what the standard deviation is used for, all right, basically to predict where percentages of data would exist, all right, Now, um, just to uh, give you some uh, idea, here is a data table right, that I had drawn in Microsoft Excel. I'm gonna give you the file and this uh, sheet as well. You could just go ahead and use the file that I have if you want to. The thing is, it's meant to, first of all, have a place to tabulate. You could write these numbers. 74, 75, 78, 81, 81, and 83, type them in here. Even if you put them out of order, there is a function you could use that will just automatically reorder them. Let me give you that information. Um, to use Excel, um, let me just tell you in a nutshell, if you've ever played Battleship, the board game, you already know how to use Excel, all right? Because in Battleship, all right, there are, um, I think it's uh, numbers written this way and letters using, written this way. Um, anyhow, any one of the locations, X marks the spot, would be identified, you know, according to those two coordinates. Right. Anyhow, if you know how to cut and paste, you are also ahead of the game. Right. You could just use, if you're using a Microsoft, uh, pardon me, a PC computer, Control uh, X. Right. Or Control C if you just want to copy, right. and if you want to paste, it's Control V. If you're on a Mac, it's just Com, you know, Command X, you know, and so forth. Command V. That's uh, and highlighting. If you know how to highlight, cut, and paste, you're already out of the game. Now, um, if you choose to basically enter the data in the order that it occurred, right, there's a function in the toolbar that looks like this. AZ, if you look up at the toolbar and you see AZ, highlight uh, the data and then press this and it will put it in numerical order for you, even after you've typed it. Um, there is actually a function that is written in um, 
uh, already in the program. And so it, there is usually a button that looks like an italicized F and then X meaning a function. But uh, along the toolbar, there's certain, it depends on which ver version of Excel you're looking at. There are little icons that indicate what they use for, like for finance or for trigonometry or what have you. If you dig, you'll finally get to it. Without having to dig, this is the standard deviation. It says T, D, E, V, all right? And then an open parentheses. If you just physic, well, you have to put equals, all right? If you type, it's kind of a glorified calculator, all right? You know how on a calculator you usually press equals last in order to get it to do what you want? In the case of Excel, you hit equals first to indicate that you're writing a function. And if you type STDEV, standard deviation, it will calculate wherever you draw the data from, right? So if your data happens to be in column A1, right, all the way to, you know, um, I don't know, A8, if you just to highlight the column, from where it begins to where it ends, right? What should show up automatically is a the coordinates of the first uh, cell down to the coordinates of the last cell. So you'll see something like that, A1 uh, colon A8, and then you can just close it, all right? And if you hit enter, it automatically spits out, you know, what the standard deviation is. I um, broke it up piecemeal because I wanted to show you how it was evolving, all right? And um, although it's hard to see here, this was originally in gray. I guess my printer ran out of ink. Um, what you would see is that there's one mean, there's um, one total sum of the squares, there's one quotient here, right, which would technically be the variance, and then there's one standard deviation. The reason why there are columns here with multiple entry points is because there's usually more than just one piece of data, right? There should be at least two, right? All right. Anyhow, you're welcome to use that if you'd like to. There's other functions if you want. Um, I'll add this. If you want to use Excel has a tendency to skip uh, automatically to the next um, cell in a column. If you want to basically, in your calculations, freeze the data value from which the, uh, the calculation is drawing, all right, you would put a dollar sign in front of the, uh, the coordinate ordered pairs. All right. Anyhow, so... <clears throat> Um, if you just put that, it basically free, uh, just stops Excel from moving. Okay, that is sometimes handy. Just do these questions and then we'll call it a day. They're pretty quick. This first example is just to calculate the range again. The amount of carb, uh, car yeah. the amount of carbohydrates in grams of ten different types of yogurt is given below. Uh, determine the range of these data. Okay, these are grams of yogurt. Right. Let me show you um, this really quickly, and then I'll show you how to use your calculator. This is example one. 
Right. Um, look at what's been. Am I doing this to myself? I just hold this. All right. Get in the habit again. Rank the data first. It's just a good uh, sort of uh, a rule of it. Uh, I wouldn't just say etiquette because that's not really logical, but um, it's a good habit when you're working in statistics. All right. If you rank the data first, all right, it makes it easier to identify what is the largest thing and what is the smallest thing. So if you had it given to you like so, this is the process that I myself incorporate. Eight, nine, eight, seven, eight, nine, sixteen. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. When you're ranking, all right. Uh, scan for what you regard as being the lowest number. So it looks like it's eight, right? All right, and then cross it out so that you know that you covered that, right? And then there happens to be the second eight. Cross it out. Uh, jump on the gun here. Eight, right? Then the next one is logically nine, and there's two of those, right? Um, then there's 12. Cross it out. Next one, 16, and then 18, and then 19, and then 26, and then 29. All right. You had 10, uh, <clears throat> 10 values for carbohydrates. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, you still have 10. All right, now since this is a calculation of range, all right, the range is just the highest minus the lowest. So the highest is evidently 29, and the lowest is evidently 8. So that means that the range is 21 grams, if you're going to keep the unit. That is the total spread right, from the two extreme. The distance, the difference between the two extrema. Okay. Now, when you do the next problem, um, this is a good opportunity to teach you or remind you how to use your calculator, which is more likely what you would do especially if you had a lot of data. Okay, let me write what you have up here first. For example, two, what you're given is, and that's this, this question here, the, a veterinarian in an animal hospital records, uh, recorded the following lifespans of selected Labrador retrievers, as I've said, to the nearest year. All right, determine the standard deviation of their lifespans. So, um, 7 years, 9 years, 11, 15, 18, 12. All right. If you are working with a machine, all right, like Excel spreadsheet, uh, pardon me, a software, all right, you, um, you don't have to put things in order. As I mentioned, Excel will, even if you type something out of order, it can automatically rectify it for you. All right. If you are going to use your calculator, and I want to right now, you again don't have to put it in order, it will compensate. All right. Now, here's the thing. All right, remember from last time, on your calculator like this, presumably which you are armed with, you want to firstly uh, clear data if there's any junk in there. All right, so you will hit second. And then data to get to statistics. Right. And then you're going to scroll over in the menu to where it says clear data. And then press enter. Right. Uh, let me see again. Here's your calculator. Sorry about the reflection again. So, second, and then data to engage to statistics. We're going to come back for this actually. 
Let me see if that's visible, that's better. If you go to the end of the menu, clear data just to be on the safe side, then it should be fine. Now, uh, fine. Now what you're gonna do is just automatically hit the data button and you already have a blank place to enter X1. So you're just gonna press the data button and then what you're gonna see is X1 and the blank space. You're gonna to have to keep scrolling down, all right? to enter these data values. Right. So I'm going to basically enter 7, 9, 11, 15, 18, and uh, 12. So here's 7. And then it only occurs once, so I'm going to skip frequency. And then enter 9 here. Skip the frequency, enter 11, enter 15. Eighteen and then twelve. All right. Once I've gotten it to I'm suspicious. I must have typed something wrong because I skipped the value here. Seven, nine, eleven. 15, that's it, I put the frequency wrong, okay. 18, 12, okay. Once you've gotten down to X6, all right, uh, you went to 12, of course. You don't have to really press enter, I just feel like doing that. Now, you want to engage stat bar, all right. Actually, what I really should have done is made sure that it knew that I wanted one variable statistics first. So I'm going to take my chances here. There, yeah, okay. It was already preset to that. So N, remember, is the cardinal number, the sixth data value. X bar is the average. And as you scroll through this, it tells you what the those numbers are. SX is the standard deviation of the sample. This is, look, spit curl uh, O here, known as lowercase sigma X, is standard deviation of a population. So you'll notice there's a slight difference between those two values. One is dividing by six and one is dividing by five. All right, so the standard deviation of the sample is four. That's not quite right. Oh, yeah. It's because I didn't tell it, I'm sorry. This is old SCSI data in here, I gotta get rid of. Set the main example. Once you clear the data on this calculator, because it's a little stupid, all right, and so am I, all right, you have to go back into it. Tell it that you want one variable statistics, which means that you're going to go back in here, second data, stat, and since it's already on that, it's already on one bar. Just press enter. All right. You have to go through that step, even if it is superfluous. All right. The calculator may just take information that is old data and have it stored there still. So. All, right. all right. So uh, I may have to do this again, but here, second data, and even though it's already on that, <laughs> press enter. Now, it might have erased all my data, we'll see. No, it looks like it's there, so good. So now I'm gonna hit stat bar, and now we have N, the average, 15, and the standard deviation is four, good, okay. Now look, standard deviation is four, right? That is sample, this is population. Look at the difference. It's very close, right? Three point six, right? Why the difference? Because one again is dividing by the six values that you have and the other one is dividing by um, five. This is dividing by five in theory, this is dividing by six. Okay. So what do we have from this 
you can tell um, utilizing this that your total number of values, just to confirm it, is six, all right? That the average, without having to do the calculation piecemeal, is 12, all right? And that the sample standard deviation is four years. What is the standard deviation again? It is the average dif uh, difference, distance, whichever you prefer, um, of any of the values, of the values, to the common point. It's an average, okay? We'll do another one with the money here. And hopefully this will go a little bit quicker. <laughs> no hiccups. So for example three, still using our calculator. All right, uh, these are the data values. Uh, $17, $28, $32, $36, $50, $52, $66, $74, and $104, all right? This is example three here. All right. The following are the prices of nine uh, stocks on the New York Stock Exchange. Determine the standard deviation of the prices. All of these are dollars. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, again, I'm going to have to go through this exercise of clearing out the data because we still have uh, dog data in here. <laughs> so, clear out your data. Uh, again, this, this is unnecessary, but I'm going to do, do it anyway. Uh, make sure that you're using one variable statistics. Now, hit data, and you can enter these values as you see them in the order that they're given. 17, 28, 32, 36, 50, 52, 66, 74, no, not that one, 74, 104. Right. Frequency is a nice thing if you happen to have another uh, data value that is the same. Right? That doesn't occur in this case, but it's a way to spare you from having to type it several times if in theory it shows up several times. Um, the only downside to it is when you're like me and you're entering it, you may not press the down button enough. Anyhow, you should be on X9 104. So now you're going to hit uh, stat var. And it will tell you the number of values is nine, which is what it should be. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Good. All right. All right. The uh, mean is 21, apparently. Uh, pardon me, 51. Dollars. All right. And the sample standard deviation is $27. All right. If you round it to the, the the hundredth place would be the second zero, right? So pennies, all right, would be 27.01. This is a standard deviation of 27.01 dollars, all right? The average distance to the middle, if you will. So that's not too bad, right? Anyhow, I will be using the standard deviation again in, as I mentioned, um, section 12.5, right, which is April holiday. Okay, and that is that. Okay, now let me see. Everything is done? Good. Right. Um, for homework, um, just do uh, section uh, 12.4, ideally by next Wednesday. 
Have a good Thanksgiving, by the way. All right. And be careful out there.